Okay, now, you know that I say that the there is nothing other than electrons, and that the core of every atom and every molecule will primarily be more positive, because it will push those positive, which are the non-reactive particles, away from all of the reactive particles, and they will con tend to congeal in the center. Now, at some point I said about helium, or I said hydrogen, when I meant to say helium, uh, it's somewhere in, I noticed I made a mistake, so if you see me say hydrogen, you say, oh no, no, Roger, that's helium, it's 7,350 electrons, well, that was my mistake. Now, so what are we going to be looking at now? We are going to be looking at the nucleus. And I say that there's always going to be, don't forget, there's always going to be a positive core, which will have a pretty good density of positiveness, which will attract all of the negativeness towards it. But the they'll only get to a certain point until there's stability and that happens at certain frequencies and these frequencies appear to be dictated by Schumann resonance or something along that line now watch what happens here don't forget this is going to be the accumulation of the central point now let me turn this on I have you running real real slow so you can see what happens but you can see that there's going to be a lot of motion in here then it stabilizes. Now, I want to stop this. Now, you see what we're looking at here? Pay real close attention. See that? You see that? You see that? You see that? You don't see that here, or here, or here, or here. So it's like one out of phase, and this is what they call the rule of eight, which is eight electrons surrounding or in the valence shell. There's a, anyway, just think of it that way. There's eight of them. And we'll see that rule of eight fairly regular. Now, what exactly is going on here? I can see an attachment between these two. And no attachment here, no attachment to speak of, no attachment, no attachment. Now, why are these literally pulling extra electrons into themselves. These have to be the positives, in my way of thinking, sucking themselves into, and these are the gravity portions. These are the explosive white ones. When these concuss, it's not these that are going to explode in my world, it's these going to explode. Because they have a, a very strong attraction, but they have a very strong opposition to another one trying to invade its space. These don't seem to have that. They, I believe that's what it is. I could be wrong. It could be exactly the opposite, but it's one or the other. Now let's take a little deeper look at this. Okay, my friends, you know how I said I can explain how this happens. Now, this is Latham's crazy machines. What they did was they took positive core surrounded it with the negative electrons, exactly like I say in electron flood theory. So basically that is this, and these are that. Now this comes in as one of these to try to get to the positive core, but the negative surrounding them say, no, you have to stay away. Uh, you, you have a negative, too. This is a positive and a negative. So it comes up, bam, watch. Boom. You see that? Isn't that cool? <laughs> now, it's stuck right in that polarity, in between the magnetic fields that surround it, basically, to think of it that way. So it's captured in this vortex, how let's call it. Now, he's going to shake it. It'll, it'll, call, it'll hold there. It'll, you can bounce it around a little bit. That's called exciting it. That's called forcing other particles into the matrix because it's not only going to be there, there's going to be about a trillion zillion other of these around here. So anytime you bang one over here or bang one over there, that's going to jiggle a little bit. That's called excitation. It's called warmth. It's called heat. It's called excitation. Maybe I said that already. That's excitation, that's heat, that's warmth. 
and it, and it, w it would be doing this because we're forcing electrons somewhere else that will try to f push that out of its position. And it wants to desperately hold on to where it's at, but once you put so much in it, you force it out of there, like boiling it or burning it, combustion. All right, that would have been either combustion, driving that electron away through combustion, or like something hitting it so hard that it drove that electron out into luminescence. Okay, my friends, there was always a question, what causes the fundamental frequencies of molecules and atoms? Well, it's because of the Schumann frequency. And what is the Schumann frequency? It's the impact vibration of the electrical impact. And I'm going to show you this very soon. 7.83 hertz approximately, add another 6.5, another 6.5, and so forth. Now, those are the distances of actual layers of the atmosphere and these are actual layers of the atmosphere the impact zone pushes them in as you go this way they trail off and it's the spin and it's also the scrub through space okay my statement is is the Schumann frequencies are what excites atoms and molecules and they are the predictable Schumann reported reliable and predictable frequencies, that's oscillations, in the atmosphere that existed in the cavity or space between the surface of the Earth and the ionosphere. And the reason for this is that as the Earth spins, it's spinning against electrical particles that are out here. We have electrical particles attached to us. As we spin through them, we charge and it builds a charge and then it slants and then it builds and, it's, and then it builds and it's, that's the frequency of 7.83 hertz. Now, the frequency below it gets pulsated and then the frequency below that gets pulsated and then the one below that gets pulsated into the earth. Those are the Schumann frequencies and they also pulsate electrons that are in the surface of the earth everywhere. So there's a lot to take into consideration here, but these, these Schumann frequencies are very important and they are, I believe, important to bioregulation and we are really messing with them and we should look at it a little deeper.